Next presenter is uh, Professor Park Jong Hwa. Uh, he is the the Genome uh, Industrial Technology Center at UNIS, as well as the representative of Clinomics. And the title of his presentation, his presentation is COVID-19 and Education of Inclusion Ideology Driven by Science Innovation. The title sa sa sounds quite interesting, and this is the last official presentation uh, for today's forum. I understand that you must be very tired uh, spending a lot of time here, but I'd like to ask for your attention to the presentation. So please leave uh, questions on the chatting box. Professor Park, please. Hello, everyone. Thank you for the introduction. So the title of the presentation is Scientific and Innovative Education on Inclusion Ideology. As you know, one of the areas that is most affectedly and most that is most affected by COVID-19 is education. Of course, there are changes in other sectors, like in the uh, medical sector, but probably, in my view, education is the area that is most affected by COVID-19. So uh, I'd like to uh, thank the organizers, especially uh, Mr. Oh Se-jung, president of the Seoul National University, for giving me this opportunity. COVID-19 is equivalent to the disasters that could be inflicted by uh, the Third World War, if there is any. So I think that, and of course, you know, one of the previous presenters talked about PC and AD, such expressions that are reported in the newspaper. But I think that COVID-19 is giving us the opportunity for us to reflect on ourselves. This is the conclusion of my presentation, that is, COVID-19 is a man-made disaster uh, caused by uh, the contamination of the political and economic ecosystem. So the basis for that is the misconception of the Darwinism. And I think that for the future, science and inclusive ideology will be the basis for future education. And COVID-19 should be an opportunity, should be an opportunity for us to, to think about a democracy again. Uh, having happiness and uh, having a high quality of uh, lives is important as talked about, as mentioned in the previous presentations. But I think that uh, to make that happen, what we need is inclusiveness that is scientific and innovative. These are the examples of the media coverage concerning uh, people who uh, took their lives in this COVID-19 situation. If I were them, probably I wouldn't. Um, I would not have uh, made uh, that kind of situation. However, in the current crisis, there are people who are losing their lives, who are taking their lives, killing themselves. That is shocking, because uh, COVID-19 is a virus. It's caused by a virus. It's like a bacteria. However, looking at uh, those people who are making an extreme choice, it seems to me there is a big gap between scientists and the, uh, the citizens in terms of how they think of the crisis, the pandemic crisis. What is a life? The core element to the life is information. So the life is a body of information. It's a program of information that enables self-replication. So what do humans and viruses have in common? Self-replication. Just like human, actually the viruses are uh, trying to self-replicate themselves. In order to that, they infiltrate into the bo human body. So viruses and humans have the same objective. So far, there are many infectious diseases, including ca uh, cancer and aging. And also, uh, over time, because of those changes, the perception that we have for the society or for the economy is changing as well. When we go deeper into the COVID-19, the structure of co coronavirus is based on mathematic elements. 
So uh, this is the structures of the infection virus. And within the system, within the structures, they have a balance in themselves. So it's like switching on and off. So the switching on and off, this kind of process goes on and on. As you see in the picture, sometimes you know that structure is trashed, and uh, some of the structures are combined together and detached, detached from each other. So in the process, they make changes. For example, they are they make reactions to different temperatures. But if we have a good understanding of the virus. That will contribute to coming up with countermeasures for infectious diseases. As you see in this picture, there are small elements. And so these elements have information. And the coronavirus is regarded unstable. So because of that, people were very fearful of the virus in initial stages. So this is the structure of the hepatitis C type. But what about coronavirus? We don't know what kind of elements are inside a circular structure of the coronavirus. But it is based on RNA and DNA. And this is the structures of the hepatitis C and hep hepatitis C and all the things here are interconnected. And interconnection, such interconnection is uh, done in a solid manner. Very stable structure. And this will become endemic. So uh, next year and uh, the two years later, it's going to be an endemic. So that means that we need to go with it. We need to live with it, live with it in the future. There are many living species in the world uh, on the, in this uh, planet Earth. So there are genomes. So if you analyze genome, so inside the water, numerous and numerous uh, numbers of viruses are inside. So the virus particles are so many in numbers. It's like you know, 10 uh, to the 31st. And 100 million kinds of viruses infect 2 million species. When you do the research, there is a virus called HDRD. So that means that 8% of human genomes are real viruses. And uh, in human body, about 40 or 50 percent of the viruses are origin, uh, are uh, con consists of uh, genome uh, particles. In some human bodies, uh, the portion goes up up to 80 or 90 percent. So through the process of evolution, these viruses uh, have been collected by human bodies, and with the virus, in some aspects. The humans have uh, have been uh, evolving, so now it's time for us to redefine the virus. So, in that sense, I'd like to say that there are a lot of viruses in our human bodies, and those viruses uh, process a lot of information and data. Because of the virus, uh, the natural environment is uh, being destructed. And, uh, that's what many people are saying. However, I have a different perspective. The pure nature or pristine nature does, do not, uh, does not exist in reality. In this uh, planet Earth, there are so many kinds of viruses. And uh, planet Earth is contaminated by the garbage that we created. What about Mars? Mars do not have, does not have air, and it doesn't have the same environment um, as the Earth. However, it's clean. So the, and from some point, viruses that used to be poisonous are producing some kind of air. So the poisonous air um, was used to be generated in the past. However, the viruses are generating new stuff. And uh, so that was done by our ancestors. Viruses are coming and infiltrating into the human bodies through the respiratory system of humans. 
So when we usually talk about the planet Earth, it's covered with the green area. And uh, the lawmaker, Mr. Lee Gang Jae, talked about microbiome. But from another perspective, I would say that the microbiome itself is a collection of really filthy viruses. All those filthy viruses are intertwined with each other. And the, the Earth is based on many kinds of interactions and much more than you think. But you know, we have a tendency to apply dichotomy. So we think that this or that. So the viruses is something that sh we should stay away from. So that's kind of dichotomy uh, way of thinking is being applied. But I'd like to say that the viruses and humans and are intertwined with each other much more than you think. And so what is a uh, life? And so I like to put an emphasis once again that uh, COVID-19 is a man-made disaster. So first of all, it is re really important to know that COVID-19 is a man-made disaster. Somebody asked the questions whether man really made the disasters or whether the disasters made human um, turn um, the virus into a crisis. But in fact, there are viruses all over the world and or in the, in the uh, environment that we are in. However, if those viruses are not well, well managed enough, the virus becomes a problem. And because of the COVID-19 coronavirus, you know, we are in a crisis. But what about the environment concerning um, us? So the US and China conflict um, between so the two nations were, were engaged in uh, conflict. And there was environmental destruction. And the initial response to the disease was a failure. So it was not well done. In the process, this virus became more pro problematic, thus becoming uh, the pandemic. So COVID-19 came in in a situation where there is a trade war between the two uh, superpowers. And also, when you look at the inside of the situation, there is what is more worrisome. Now, from somewhere uh, in the history, we began to be complacent, uh, especially right after the Second World War. And now, countries around uh, countries around the world just make, are good at making calculations, and they are money centered. So there is a kind of international order where wealthy nations direct non wealthy nations. So economy and culture in many sectors, we didn't have a right level of philosophy. Of course, you know, some people are saying that philosophy in this world has gone away, has passed away. So we need to look back on what kind of philosophy we have, we used to have. And also at the same time, what kind of philosophy do we need now? This is a question we need to tackle. So at the basis of a man-made crisis, is there a philosophy? And we had problems with the backbones of the philosophy. What I mean by backbones here is the misconception caused by Darwinism and survivor of the fittest. Especially in the Western world, the survival of the fittest or Darwinism was uh, taken was taken as something for granted. However, we need to rethink about it. And in the evolution of theology, the things or elements in this world are uh, based on uh, symbiosis. And they are interconnected uh, and interdependent. And in the process, uh, there are areas for cooperations and collaboration. So what, I, what I'm telling you is that the viruses are the part of the elements of the environment, and the humans and the viruses are, are the ones that should coexist. So when it comes to a life, we need to value diversity. And the same goes to bacteria, not only to viruses. 
So for example, bacteria, mitochondria uh, is one of the things that is generating energy for us. So we are living with them and we are in this world together with them. But the COVID-19 pandemic has come due to the contaminations of the ecosystem that we have. And now we need innovation and scientific thinking. Just like a software, you know, we need a new uh, OS system. So we need to program, observe, program ourselves so that we can have scientific thinking and innovation. The core to the life, the core to life is diversity. And inclusiveness is important as well. What, do you, what I mean by inclusiveness? Inclusiveness is about embracing others who are different from me and who are different from us. So in this universe, there is a loop, the feedback loop, where uh, plus and minus can be interconnected. The same goes to the democracy. So if someone is stubborn, through the feedback system, that kind of stubbornness or the problems can be reported and can be known to the general public. So when you dis disassemble, dis disassemble uh, democracy at the bottom of the bricks that constitute democracy is there the feedback system. So the uh, democracy mechanism and the life mechanisms, basically they are based on the same things. Whether it is democracy, whether it is uh, the um, inclusiveness, uh, the basic elements are the same, and the basic elements of whatever it is need to interact with each other for mutual existence. 10, uh, 100,000 years ago, and we used to eat each other. However, the, the reason why we could survive is uh, science, scientific innovation. Scientific innovation is uh, should be based on critical and independent thinking, and through the feedback system, opinions needs to be inter uh, so uh, the interchanged or communicated. So this kind of communication system with the uh, good uh, negative system or, or with the feedback system should be in place. Rational and critical and independent way of thinking is needed for innovation and scientific mindset. Then, and what should we do in this pandemic uh, situation? First, pandemic uh, will keep coming, keep coming, uh, will keep coming up. So absolutely, it will come back and come back. So we need to make preparations for creating an environment where such viruses cannot be destructive. I think Korea has less chances of having a pandemic, but it's not the case for other countries. So there are more pressures put on other countries, but that will affect Korea as well. So we need to uh, prepare ourselves for that kind of situation. So in the long term, let's say that there is a change to the world. So when you think about future, what should we do? Back in 1920s, Korea was a colony. And in the 1950s, Korea was one of the poorest countries in the world. But now Korea has become one of the wealthy nations in the world. and. COVID-19 gave the same question to every country in the world. But after the, that kind of testing, Korea all of a sudden you know, took the, one of the highest ranking places in the test without knowing it. But compared to 50 years ago, compared to 100 years ago, Korea's position has been upgraded. So what was the main cause of that? Education, I think. So 80 or 90 percent of the students, they go to universities. And uh, Korea is the only country with that kind of high ratio of university admission. But what we have been overlooking is the fact that we were focused on systems, not focusing on humans. 
So the uh, collective intelligence is, of course, important. It's not wrong. However, we have been focused on just a system, it's establishing, establishing systems. Uh, however, we need to be more human-centered. So the core content for education in the future is IT-related programming education, coding and how to resolve the issues or the, how to resolve the problems. So this kind of programming education should be given at all school. And science technology-based education is required as well. So that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much, Professor Park Jong-hwa. You provide us many things to think about. Now we've listened to the two different presentations in session three.